The new SC1200 GSM console is the perfect home security solution if you do not have access to a telephone landline. To begin, we'll start by installing batteries into the console. To do that, open the top cover to access the battery compartment. Ensure to observe polarity for proper battery placement. With the compartment door still open, we'll connect the power supply. The GSM console includes a SIM card reader for use with cellular SIM cards that allow the console access to GSM networks. The most common US GSM carriers are AT&T and T-Mobile. In Canada, the larger carriers that are compatible are Rogers and Fido. When purchasing a SIM card, just tell the wireless carrier that you need a cellular-only plan. No data is needed, reducing the cost of the plan significantly. In order to purchase a SIM card, you'll need the console's IMEI number. The IMEI, or International Mobile Station Equipment Identity Number, is unique to every device on a cellular network and required by the wireless carrier to purchase a SIM card. To locate the IMEI number for your security console, close the top cover and plug the other end of the power supply into any available power outlet. You will see tamper on the display. Press clear on the keypad to clear this error message. From the home control screen, key in the number 55 and then press the off button. Your IMEI number will be displayed and you can copy it down to give it to the GSM carrier. The console uses standard sized SIM cards only. It will not support micro or nano card sizes. Once you receive your SIM card, you will need to activate it if you haven't done so already. Follow the instructions included with the SIM card to do so. Once activated, you can install your SIM card to the console. The SIM card slot is located behind the top cover. Insert the SIM card into the SIM slot with the metal contacts facing you. In order to find the best location for your console, one with the strongest signal, key in 55 then on from the console's keypad to view the cellular signal strength indicator. The higher the number on the indicator, the stronger the signal. With home control on the display, to begin accessing the menu options, simply press the up or down arrows on the keypad. The console will prompt you for your PIN, and the default code is four zeros. After inputting the PIN, you'll be presented with the install menu. Use this option to install all of your wireless sensors and remote controls. For more information on this option, see our security sensors video. Pressing the down arrow on the keypad will bring you to the set clock menu. From this menu, you can change the time on the console by pressing OK on the keypad. Use the keypad to key in the current time of day, followed by the AM or PM buttons. Press OK again to return to the main menu. The third option will take you to the phone numbers menu where you will program your six emergency contact phone numbers. Pressing OK will take you to the first available slot. Press OK again and you should see set PH1. Using the keypad, key in the first phone number and press OK to save. The console will automatically move to the next available slot, then press OK and repeat the process. You can program up to six different numbers or the same number six times. Do not program the console to dial the police or a hospital directly. Doing so might incur fines. Program it to call a friend or relative. If you only want to store one phone number, fill up all six memory slots with the same number. After programming all six phone numbers, press clear on the keypad to return to the main menu. The fourth option is the message menu. Here, you can begin programming your pre-recorded message notifying the person answering the call of the event. Press OK to access the record and replay menus. Press 1 to record your message. When the display reads, speak now, clearly speak your message into the console's microphone located near the speaker. A typical message could be, there's an alarm in progress at your address, at the end of this message, please press any button on your touch-tone phone to listen in. 
The console will record for a full 12 seconds and then return to the record replay menu. Press 2 to review your message. Once you're satisfied with your message, press clear to return to the main menu. The fifth option will take you to the new pin menu where you can change the default pin. You can change the pin at any time. However, ensure to write down your pin and keep it somewhere safe. There is no way to reset the pin if it's been forgotten. The sixth option is the memory clear menu. Pressing OK will take you to a sub-menu where you will find options to Clear all sensors Master reset Clear all timers And clear all remotes The seventh choice is the options menu. From this menu, you can tell the console if you'd like it to chime when the doors or windows are opened in the chime sub-menu. You'll also find options to change the console's light code and house code from their respective sub-menus. If you'd like, you can also turn the siren off and have a silent alarm from the siren sub-menu. The eighth option is the delays menu. Here, you can access the entry, exit, dial, and answer sub-menus. Should you need longer than 30 seconds to disarm your console upon entering your home, Use the Entry sub-menu to increase this delay up to 99 seconds. The same can be done from the Exit sub-menu to increase the time the console gives you to leave your home after the alarm has been activated. The dial delay sets up how long the console waits before dialing out to its program telephone numbers. The Answer delay is useful if you have an answering machine as you can adjust the time the console waits before it answers and asks you for your PIN when dialing into the console. The final option is the Set Timer menu, which allows you to program timed events for the console to turn on any X10 controlled lights. For more information, please see our Security Lights video. Press Arm Home on the console to arm all door and window sensors instantly. Motion detectors will not trip the system when it is armed in this mode. You can disarm from the console by simply entering your four-digit PIN on the keypad. When arming the system in away mode from the console, it will automatically provide the preset exit delay. When the alarm is tripped, the console dials the first phone number in the order they were stored in the console and automatically begins playing the recorded message. The dialer is set to play that message three times automatically to ensure that whomever answers will hear it in its entirety. If someone is there to answer and picks up in the middle of the first playback, they will have two more chances to catch the full message. If no one is there to answer the call by the end of the second playback, then before the third playback of the recording starts, the console hangs up and dials the next number. If the alarm is tripped and no one answers or disarms the system, the siren will sound and the lights will flash for 5 minutes. The display will show the alarm zone, but the system remains armed and will trip again if another sensor zone is breached, repeating this cycle until the system is disarmed. If the call is taken and the alarm is deemed a non-emergency, you can choose to leave the system armed by simply pressing any button on your phone to quiet the siren and then hang up. Or, you can key in your PIN and press 0 then the pound key to disarm the system. To rearm the system, press 0 then the star key.